Hey, good morning. I hope everyone is uh, doing well and uh, excited for another uh, morning with uh, coffee with me and you in the Bible as we uh, start our day together. It's always good to get together and reflect upon God's Word each morning, and so I'm glad to be with you now. So I hope you've got your coffee and your Bible and you're ready to dig into whatever God wants to say to us today through His Word. Today in the uh, life of um, the greater church is uh, the feast day of Matthias. Um, he is the disciple who was chosen to replace Judas. So I want to read to you the story of how he was chosen today in Acts. And we're going to read it in Acts chapter 1, uh, verses 21 uh, through the end of the chapter, which is verse 26. So Acts chapter 1, 21 through 26. So one of the men who had accompanied us, this is Peter speaking. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went out, went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he's taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So that proposed to Joseph called Persabbas, who was known as Justice, and Matthias. They prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take the place in the ministry and the apostleship from which Judas turned aside Je Judas turned aside to go to his own place. They cast lots for them. The lot fell upon Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Um, so there's a couple of things here in this passage um, that are important. Um, there, Matthias was added, making sure that there were twelve apostles. Remember, Scripture is full of the importance of symbolic numbers, and so there are, it was important that there were twelve apostles. Why, why 12? Is that just a nice number? Um, if you remember from the Old Testament, how many uh, tribes of Israel were there? Well, there were 12. So just as there were 12, 12 tribes of Israel, there were 12 apostles, um, symbolizing the, the completeness of the mission of God, uh, symbolizing the completeness of uh, the call of God. Um, in many ways, in many ways, it's important for us to understand that in the New Testament, the church fills the same role that Israel fell, uh, fulfilled in the Old Testament, which is to be a light to the world. So just as Israel's mission ultimately was, as God tells them, and when God calls Abraham, God tells Abraham that he, he will have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and they will be a light to the Gentiles, and that all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through them. Same way, the church has the same role. Our job is to be a light. Jesus said in, in the Sermon on the Mount, "You're a city on a hill. Um, you um, you can't hide your light under a bushel. Um, we need to let our light shine before all people, so that they can praise the Lord." So, um, so just as there were twelve tribes of Israel, there are twelve apostles. So Matthias is chosen to replace Judas, who is now no longer one of the apostles after he rejected Jesus, betrayed Jesus, and then committed suicide. So Matthias takes his place. Um, we see that Matthias was one of those who, follow, who followed um, followed from the beginning. It says they had these requirements that it must be one who followed from the baptism of John all the way through. Remember, as you read in the Bible, that Jesus had different levels and layers of followers. He had the 12 who had a specific mission and specific purpose. He had, he had, he had the entire group of people who followed him probably 150 or so that'd be the women that'd be all the others then you delve down within that you had the 70 who were in who who were part of ministry remember at one point in the gospels he sent the 70 out two by two to do ministry matthias and justice both would have been part of that 70 most likely they would not have been part of the 12 but they would have been part of the 70 that were entrusted to do ministry with jesus so you have about the 150, then you had the 70, then you had the 12, which were the apostles, uh, those who knew Jesus the closest and the best. And then with the 12, you had James, um, Peter, and, and, and John. So Jesus, um, Je Jesus had uh, a lot of different followers that he led and followed and mentored and taught and pastored in different levels. Matthias was one of the ones who were definitely one of the in the greater new group, but he was not part of the 12. So now the time has come when um, the lots are cast. That That's how Wesley also made important decisions. Sometimes he would cast lots. He would say the results are in God's hands. And so um, um, I had a professor in seminary, Dr. Bryant, who when we prepared for a test, 
he would, we would have, you know, 12. He, he, would, he would say there would be 12, 15 questions on the test. And so he would, he would give us the test. Like, okay, here's your 12 questions. You know, this would, these 12 questions will be on the test. So he would give us the actual test. And we would prepare for it a week or two out. And then on the on the test day, he would he would he would cast lots, and whatever whatever three numbers turned up would be the three um would be the three questions that we had to answer on the test. So you know uh, I guess the same way Matthias how Matthias was picked was the same way that Dr. Bryant um, picked his questions for his midterm and for his finals. But Matthias is picked. He's now an apostle in the same way that the others are. Um, meaning he is in charge of teaching and the ordering of the church from this point, point moving forward. Here's what's, in, here's what's interesting about Matthias. What do you know about him? What do you know about Matthias? Probably not much. I don't know much about him. Um, scripture doesn't tell us much about him. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of, there are some, some legends associated with him from the church moving forward, but we don't, we don't know a lot about him. Uh, he's not a, a well-known figure, um, but he had a great role and responsibility in the church, even though he wasn't well-known. Faithfulness does not equal fame. Faithfulness does not equal being out front. Faithfulness doesn't equal being in charge. Faithfulness means being faithful with the mission that God has entrusted to you. Matthias was faithful in this mission that he was entrusted to within the church. So I think today, one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is this. What is it we are desiring? Are we desiring faithfulness? Are we desiring fame? Are we desiring faithfulness? Are we desiring to be in charge? Are we desiring faithfulness? Are we desiring to be you remembered, if you will? Our job in life is to be faithful with the mission that God has laid in front of us. Our job in life is to be faithful with the task that God has given to us. That really is it. That, that really is. The rest doesn't really matter. Um, fame, fortune, these things are so fleeting. They do not earn you well done, my good and faithful servant, at the end of the day. Faithfulness is where life is found. And if we spend our life chasing something like fame, of course fame is a relative term. Um, you know, if we chase our life being internet famous, um, if we chase our life, um, chasing our life, getting Instagram likes or Facebook follows or TikTok, whatever TikToks get, uh, I'm old, I have no idea, um, then what have we really gained? But if we're faithful, you can hear my cat hollering right now, if we're faithful to the mission that God has given us. That's what truly matters, is that faithfulness, that faithfulness. Jesus says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because of being faithful to the mission God's given us, we find fulfillment. We find purpose. We find life. We don't find life in chasing fleeting things of the earth. We don't. Well, it, they may appear to be life for a season and for a second, they're not life. They're not life. We find life by being faithful to the task that God has given us. And our greatest task is to love God and love our neighbor. That's the greatest commandment our Savior has given to us. Matthias, he might not be as famous as the rest of them. He might just have a few verses in, 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 the, in, in Acts. He might not preach on Pentecost. He might not do all these things. But he was faithful. He was faithful to the mission that God placed before him. And because of his faithfulness, the church was complete. The apostles were complete. And the building of the church was complete. So today, be faithful. 
Even if the mission in front of you isn't one that you would have picked. Even if it isn't something that's glamorous. Even if it isn't something that you'd even want to do. Be faithful in the mission that God's given to you today. Because when we're faithful in these things, we find the life that we can find nowhere else. So, love you guys today. Praying for you. Hey, join us tonight for Bible study um, here at church. Uh, STM-UMC.org slash live. Uh, I'm going to be teaching on fasting. So, uh, I'd love for you to uh, join in and, and, and hear some some biblical encouragement and teaching on what fasting means, particularly during the season of Lent. And make plans to worship with us Sunday. Uh, it's going to be a great Sunday. You can learn more how to be with us in person at STM-UMC.org slash worship. So I look forward to seeing you tonight online at Bible study and worship with you Sunday. Have a great day.